Hello and welcome to this introduction to Baroque string playing. We, Anne-Marie and Emily, are the Baroque string tutors at HISS. We usually begin our first session on the course with some warm-up exercises covering the most common bowing patterns used in Baroque string playing. We'd like to share these exercises with you to help you keep in shape at home. Or if you're new to Baroque string play, this should help you keep, get started. We will also give you an introduction to how to hold the Baroque cello and Baroque violin in a way that's both informed by historical sources and takes your physical well-being into account. One of the things people immediately notice about the Baroque violin is the lack of shoulder rest and chin rest and many wonder how it's possible to hold the instrument without these features. The chin rest was first introduced in the mid 19th century and the shoulder rest came even later in the 20th century. So before that and in the Baroque period the violin was held without additional support. This might initially be a scary prospect, but actually the lack of additional stuff means that the instrument is much lighter, putting less stress on the joints. During the Baroque period, a variety of holds were advocated in treatises, in paintings and prints featuring violinists performing. They range from holding the violin on the chest, sometimes quite low, below the collarbone and on the collarbone, but to the right of the tailpiece. In this latter position, the instrument balances on the collarbone, shoulder and between the thumb and index finger. Think of a three-legged stool. While the violin initially feels a bit wobbly in this position, it also gives a fantastic sense of freedom. I personally play chin off most of the time, which means that I can turn my head and I avoid neck tensions. Due to the position of the violin, my chin can dip down in front of the tailpiece to keep the violin sta stable when I shift. Most modern Brock players put a bit of support, a pad or a bit of rolled up chamois underneath the, uh, the violin to adjust it. Depending on your shape, the violin might tilt forward to various degrees. You want to make sure that you can hold the instrument easily and still play the E string with ease. So avoid it being completely flat or tilt it so that you bow downwards. The freedom of this posture makes it possible to move the violin about ever so slightly when playing. This gives great freedom to the left shoulder. Do make sure to move the violin and bow in counter motion or the bow will be chasing the violin. Modern cellists who are trying Baroque cello for the first time often worry about how they're going to hold a cello that doesn't have a spike. In fact, the spike or end pin wasn't introduced until the mid 19th century. So any repertoire composed before that is perfectly playable without one. And in fact, you may well find that it gives you greater comfort and greater freedom of movement to play without a spike. First, find a chair or stool the right height for you. You'll probably find this is somewhat lower than you'd normally use for playing a modern cello with a spike. Sit on the front of the seat with your pelvis in a neutral position and your spine straight so that you're balanced on your sitting bones. Take care not to slump backwards or to arch forwards. You might find it helpful to imagine that someone has a, a thread attached to the top of your head, pulling you towards the ceiling. Once you're sitting comfortably, allow your legs to roll outwards from the hips so that your knees move apart and your heels come together. Make sure you keep your back straight all the time. 
When you pick up your cello, think about creating a bowl or basket with your legs that you can then drop the cello into so that it rests on your inner calves. As long as you've got your legs and feet in the right position, and that will vary depending on your height and the size of your instrument, the cello should just rest there naturally. You shouldn't need to grip with your knees or with your left hand. Doing that will cause excess muscle tension and it might cause pain. If you feel worried about the cello slipping down, try bringing your feet just a little closer together. You might also find that you need to try a lower chair. It also helps if you wear trousers or leggings of non-shiny material so the cello won't slip. Some people prefer to hold the cello facing more or less straight ahead with the sides of the instrument against their calves. Personally, I find it more comfortable to angle the cello slightly towards the right. This gives more freedom of movement for the left hand and brings the strings within easier reach of the bow. If you're wearing trousers with a side seam, you can use this as a guide. Make sure that the front right edge of the cello is behind the seam and you should find that the cello stays in place quite comfortably.